these two groups own the world. And if they're already behind the top shareholders of the people that are on the governing board of these protocols, they're already set up to win. To be a top 10 digital asset in 10 years when the cryptocurrency market cap is 10 trillion, 50 trillion, 100 trillion, maybe even higher, what do you think a top 10 asset would have in terms of market capitalization with a limited supply? Would the price be higher? Yes. What is going on guys? Kevin Cage here with another XRP and cryptocurrency update and let's dive into some rapid fire news. First off, Ripple the company announcing a brand new partner. We are thrilled to announce that we are partnering with PYYPL, I'll say PIPL, to bring ODL to the Middle East for the first time. A non-bank financial services provider focusing on the Middle East, Africa, and Central Asia. And please recall that Ripple has a regional headquarters right in Dubai in that financial center with hundreds of fintechs. Continuing to build momentum in the MENA with their first ODL. ODL deployment in the Middle East. With $78 billion in remittances in 2020 from Saudi Arabia and the UAE combined, the Middle East and North Africa region is home to two of the top three remittance corridors in the world. As you can see, 58% of Middle East consumers expressed a strong preference for digital payment methods. And 60% of those surveyed said they expected pass-through digital wallets or e-wallets to be the most influential digital payment method. And surprisingly, this vote of confidence in e-wallets or electronic wallets is higher than in Asia. And rather than 60% of those surveyed in the Middle East expecting e-wallets, we only had about 38% of Asian respondents to this similar McKinsey survey. Great to see this first ever ODL corridor deployment in the Middle East. Using on-demand liquidity and leveraging XRP, Pipel will provide instant low-cost remittance options for people sending money into and out of the region. Noted that XRP will not be held within the UAE, but it will still be used via ODL. And Pipel's larger mission to enable digital payments for 1 billion financially underserved smartphone users in the Middle East and Africa at large. Of course, using ODL to eliminate the need for the costly pre-funded accounts, calling these legacy accounts or this legacy infrastructure an inefficient use of capital, bingo. And the CEO even said unlocking these previously trapped funds, remember we're talking a $10 trillion float, can help better grow and scale the business and the world. As I already said, Ripple established a regional headquarters in Dubai to support their customers like Qatar National Bank and the Al Ansari Exchange, that foreign exchange in the UAE. There are huge things going on in the Middle East, and thank you to Navin Gupta and the entire Ripple team. A record year for Ripple in the MENA region, and RippleNet already logging four times the transaction volume year-to-date versus all of 2020. Ripple is continuing to succeed despite the SEC lawsuit versus XRP. This goes on to even further emphasize that XRP is not a security. We have right here Joe Matoshi or Crypto Says on Twitter, a large page with technical analysis of the XRP price chart. And as he says, the XRP price chart is coiled up. Next up, we have U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen proposing a tax on unrealized capital gains to finance Biden's Build Back Better plans. And I don't want to get political. What a strange world we are living in, talking about taxing unrealized gains of millionaires and billionaires. Next up, MasterCard to allow any merchant or bank to offer Bitcoin and crypto services just the beginning, meaning that thousands of banks and millions of merchants can soon integrate crypto into their products. Little by little. XRP, the Standard Productions XRPP, a very funny satire page on Twitter. Always get a laugh reading their posts. However, Bank XRP actually talking about this. I did see this once live before it was deleted in 2018, along with many others. MasterCard back in the day posting. Proud to announce our partnership with Ripple. Read our blog for upcoming developments. And not surprised, keep in mind, Visa even acquired Ripple's huge partner Earthport for over $300 million years ago. We should not be surprised. Ripple's already partnered with the largest financial institutions and card issuers out there. We even found the company Ripple and XRP usage specifically named in that patent that was found by King Solomon of the largest credit card issuer in the United States. So the integrations are there. I don't need to convince you of that. We've already been doing that. We've already been sharing that the past several years on this channel. What we care about is utility, regulatory clarity, and price. And then even Leonidas, check this out. Experience over on LinkedIn, the VP of Product and Innovation, new payment platform. And what do we have from August 2018, three years up until present day? For a full-time job, we can see foreign exchange, liquidity, optimization solutions, and R3, Ethereum, Hyperledger, Ripple, tokenization for Libra, JPM coin, USDC, on and on and on. And where are they based out of? London. 
tons of huge players, and I'm not saying it's just Ripple. It's Hyperledger, it's R3, it's all these groups. So you cannot dismiss the growth of the digital asset space. It went from 100 billion to over $2.6 trillion in market capitalization today. We even have CEO of Pantera Capital, the founder of the first and largest crypto hedge fund, saying that XRP will still be a top 10 digital asset in 10 years. To be a top 10 digital asset in 10 years when the cryptocurrency market cap is 10 trillion, 50 trillion, 100 trillion, maybe even higher. What do you think a top 10 asset would have in terms of market capitalization with a limited supply? Would the price be higher? Yes. And I trust capital going on to emphasize, are you still waiting to open your crypto IRA? But of course, I am leveraging that. I have XRP on that platform today for tax-free capital gains. No, not all my XRP is on this platform. What I'm saying is I have some nest eggs set up for 0% capital gains regardless that I can even trade in and out of. And I'm not paying 30% or 50% in capital gains. Links are in the video description to get your first month free. And speaking of MasterCard, so we just saw that they were partnered with Ripple, no surprise, and MasterCard taps Bact. Who owns Bact? ICE, the owner of the New York Stock Exchange, and Bact is into crypto derivatives futures. So yeah, there are behemoths behind the space to offer crypto for payment networks. Just wanted to emphasize that and really cover Bact yet again. I just want you to know that billionaires are watching this space. And yes, I know there's already billionaires, such as the CEO of FTX, whose net worth is over $20 billion, and Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase, is only $2 billion. So yeah, you better believe that this crypto space is turning heads when there are billionaires that see their peers that are in crypto, and they have a net worth that is 10 times the size of them. Speaking of MasterCard, one of my best buddies, MasterCard offering crypto services to its network. Can you see where this is going? Matthew L-I-N-Y. Let's dive into this 2020 post. MasterCard sees this picture, $235 trillion in payment flows, hundreds of trillions of dollars. It will use XRP for its blockchain settlement. Check this out and thank you for the tag, Matt. Stop shop across payment networks and payment flows, a $235 trillion opportunity. We can see real-time payments and ACH. Who's partnered with the entire backbone of the U.S. financial system with NACHA, the NACHA Alliance, N-A-C-H-A, for the ACH network, the Electronic Backbone Network? Ripple. Right here. Ripple, NACHA. Click. Joining the NACHA Alliance. Ripple at the payment stack underneath Bank of America, which is already a partner and neighboring office over in San Francisco. And this is just the tip of one million other points that the XRP community has on why we believe there is more than meets the eye for XRP. So of course, I hold other assets, I trade other assets, I invest, I rotate profits, of course, but I'm not selling my XRP to do that. So everybody can do what's best for them. If you get tired of sideways trending or distribution or you know accumulation phases and it's unbearable to hold, do what's best for you, not financial advice. I'm continuing to hold my XRP, I'm continuing to buy more XRP, and I'm continuing to also diversify in this cryptocurrency space. And anybody that's been here for the past several years, we know why. So anyways, you can see cross-border markets, open banking, go API 3, real-time payment infrastructure, and we have it linked down below as well, and I retweeted it. And the reason I showed NACHA is, it is in fact the electronic network that's the backbone of United States payments, 11,000 financial institutions, and Ripple joined them. NACHA, the ACH network, the automated clearinghouse, and I know you've heard of them before. Next up, Bank XRP. Ripple invested $1.5 million into CoinMe in 2019. $1.5 million in funding from Ripple's Spring, and that's how it's pronounced. I know a lot of people say X-Spring, but it's actually Spring, just development on the XRP ledger. It's Walmart has partnered with coin cashing machine company Coinstar and crypto cash exchange CoinMe to install 200 Bitcoin ATMs in its stores across the U.S. This is cool. You know, I'm all for making, I guess, crypto more widely accessible. And this is just part of the plan to prime people, get the masses used to seeing cryptocurrency. In 2017, there were some people that heard about Bitcoin. I'd be you know, my Uber driver would be picking me up from the airport and we'd talk crypto. I'd even talk XRP, which I called Ripple back in the day. And we'd be able to shoot the shit a bit about crypto. But not everybody knew what Bitcoin was, Ethereum, XRP. And now today, everybody knows. And some of the first cryptos they know. Oh, is it like Dogecoin? Is it like Shiba? <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but hey. Next up, guys, Jack McDonald, a titan in the space, CEO of PolySign. Please remember, PolySign, standard custody, all backed by the Ripple team and XRP. We're talking titans of the industry. The biggest digital asset managers are starting to see huge opportunity in the digital age. Watch this. What do we have? 
Blockworks, billionaire in BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, and please remember the YouTube video I uploaded of him deliberately not naming XRP. Type in CEO BlackRock Larry Fink XRP on Kevin Cage's channel and you'll see it. That was weird to talk about myself in the third person, by the way. Said he is fascinated by interest in digital assets. Oh, please, you're already positioned. And that his firm, which is the world's largest asset manager, is almost, wow, 9.5 assets under management, $9.5 trillion. I remember when it was only $7 trillion and then $8 trillion. They're studying the blockchain and crypto sectors. Please, you already own most of the infrastructure. That's a joke. Don't believe me? Well, here's Boeing, one of the largest companies in the world, and they're actually on the governing council for HBAR or Hedera Hashgraph. You may have heard of it. Also backed by Digital Currency Group, which also backs the company Ripple and API3. Cough, cough. And the top shareholders of Boeing are Vanguard Group and BlackRock. These two groups own the world. And if they're already behind the top shareholders of the people that are on the governing board of these protocols, they're already set up to win. Here's the Hedera Governing Council. I, I didn't mean to call it the board, by the way. And we can see Boeing right there, Google, FIS, which also has ties to Ripple. We have Tata Communications, and remember their court solution already mentions XRP a variety of times. And we have Deutsche Telekom. And I really like that new TV show with uh, Deutsche Telekom. What is it? Uh, like Billionaire Code or something like that? The guys that created, um, what is it, like Google Maps or something? Very cool. But anyways, Hedera is owned and governed by the world's leading organizations. Also, guys, we have Akash Network, AKT. This is just an observation because you guys know I like to do this. Um, AKT, API3, and Kava were all at one time the same price, whether that was, you know, four to five bucks or three bucks together. And now API3 and Kava are both like five dollars, fifty cents, six bucks, you know, a much higher. So I believe that Akash should be playing a little game of catch up shortly. But all right, guys, that is enough out of me. Really appreciate anybody that hits the like button. And all discounts can be found in the video description below. And until next time.